Some people might feel a little bit nervous when they first join the United States Army. If you're going active duty, you're gonna to have to go off to your very first unit, your very first duty assignment, and you might be a little bit nervous about that. You're not sure what it's gonna be like when you go off to your very first duty station, all done with that initial training, what is that like? Well, that's what I wanna to explain to you in this video, and that video starts right now. If you're going into the Army on the reserve side of the National Guard, this information probably doesn't pertain to you, but maybe you're curious about it. But if you are going to active duty, well, eventually you go off to your first duty assignment. Once you're done with AIT, you're done with OSIT, whatever the case is, you go off to your first duty station, and I wanna provide you what that's like, what may happen, what to expect, all sorts of things. You're commonly gonna probably find out where you're gonna go, what duty assignment you're gonna go to during AIT or during OSIT, unless you joined and you had it in your contract that you were getting stationed here, then you may already know. Otherwise, at some point during AIT or during OSIT, sometimes like halfway through or whatever, you probably will be able to you know, find out what you're getting assigned to. This usually comes in the form of what are called orders. Now, this is really just like a document. It's like a, a memorandum or orders is what they're called, but it's just a piece of paper that says, you know, here's where you're going, here's when you have to report by, all sorts of things. On that document, it probably tells you like the exact building you have to report to, what day you have to report, what time is the reporting time period, all sorts of things. That is the location on that installation known as the Welcome Center commonly. That Welcome Center is where you kind of start the in-processing kind of portion because yes, you have to go through an in-processing phase, not like you had to go through when you went through basic training, but there is still like an in-processing phase. Usually you can find out either from your orders or sometimes it'll be available like on the installation's website because most installations, like actually all installations, have some website and usually on there it'll tell you like what is the reporting uniform. Your reporting uniform may be civilian clothing, it may be your OCP uniform, it may be your ACU dress uniform. They'll usually put that out as far as what the reporting uniform is. So you usually have a time period of when you have to report by. If you are showing up at your first duty station and you don't have a vehicle to be able to utilize, they do typically have like some individuals maybe that are positioned at the airport to be able to help you get a lift to where you need to go to. They usually have sometimes an actual like like location in the airport that has some soldiers that are on duty like 24 hours that they rotate through and you can report to that desk and tell them, hey, I'm a new soldier reporting here and they can get you a ride to that welcome center. Like I've seen, like I think Fort Hood has one when you show up at uh, the Killeen Airport. Um, I believe there's one at the Colorado Springs one for Fort Carson, I think. I remember a long time ago, I don't know if it's still this way, but uh, at the Manhattan Airport for Fort Riley, they did not have one and they just had like a phone number you had to call. So it may just kind of depend. But you can usually call that phone number or get with one of those soldiers and they have like a shuttle or something that will pick you up and then take you to that welcome center if you don't already have a way to get there yourself. So you show up at that location, right? You are going to probably spend maybe a week there. There's some locations or some instances where you may spend two weeks there, but the most common one is usually probably only one week, maybe even sometimes shorter. But while you're there at that reception, this is where they're giving you like some briefings to tell you about the post, tell you about like places you can go to, places you can't go to, all sorts of things trying to get you your gear issued to you because you're gonna have to go through CIF to get all your gear that you need for that unit and everything. There'll be probably somewhere in there where you'll have to meet what's called your sponsor, as they sometimes call it, where somebody from your unit is gonna probably meet with you and tell you a little bit about the unit, get to know you a little bit, and then you'll have an idea as to when you're gonna actually go to that unit. But temporarily, you'll be staying where that reception kind of battalion, that reception unit, whatever you wanna call it. If you are single, they usually have barracks for you to stay in temporarily, so you usually stay in those temporary barracks to temporarily have a place to stay, but if you are a married soldier, then it gets a little bit complicated in some cases. You could already pre-plan it to where you already have an apartment lined up before you even report and you already got a place to live, cool. There are other circumstances where sometimes that installation may have like guest lodging, some kind of temporary kind of lodging for you and your family if you're a married soldier, and you can kind of live in those. I've seen some locations where they have actually like a hotel on post and they'll just put you up in that hotel and you'll temporarily stay there until you can get a, a place off post or if you're trying to get a place on post, depending on how long the wait is, then maybe you stay there temporarily. Sometimes if the wait list is really long for getting on post housing, then you may just need to get a place off post until you are able to get something on post. 
but nonetheless, you'll have a place to stay. They may even have you just go stay off post in a hotel and you have to use your BAH money just to cover the price of the hotel and then try to do it that way. Sometimes it just varies based on the installation itself as far as if they have like a guest lodging to put you in or if they just tell you that, hey, no, you gotta get yourself a hotel and then start shopping around for apartments or whatever you gotta do. And then once you get a place, then you can move out of that hotel, I guess. So once that reception phase is over, you're sponsor like i was talking about kind of a thing may come pick you up take you over to unit and get you all kind of like in process there there's a few things you probably have to do there to kind of get in processed if you're a single soldier they're gonna get you a barracks room probably probably right away probably be like one of the first things you probably do if you're married well you already probably got a place so they're probably just gonna start introducing you to people maybe do some paperwork a little bit here and there to get you into that unit and process into that unit maybe some things from their supply that they have to issue you and so they issue that stuff all that basic stuff so one of the key things you also need to do if they don't do it during that reception process time is find out what places are off limits for that location because sometimes they'll have things like bars or clubs or other places that are off limits areas because of some kind of dangerous activity, maybe they're drug related, crime related, whatever, that they don't want soldiers going to. And you don't want to get caught going to those places and saying you didn't know there was off limits because they're not going to take that as a valid excuse usually. Also, if you are a married soldier and you're trying to find a place to rent from, there are some times where they might have like off limits apartments or off limits landlords to rent to rent from because those people maybe have shady actions that they're doing where they're trying to rip soldiers off or they're horrible living conditions or whatever. So they don't want soldiers living in those conditions and living in those locations. So you want to make sure that you're not trying to rent from a landlord that's on the off limits list or an apartment complex that's on the off limits list. If you are a single soldier, I don't recommend rushing into trying to get a vehicle if you don't already have one. If you already have one, cool, great. But don't rush into trying to hurry up and get a vehicle. Get kind of situated and everything else like that. Talk to your leadership. If you, that is something you wanna do, like you wanna get a vehicle, make sure you don't get in over your head with a high interest rate, a car payment you can't afford. Don't forget there's still car insurance. So if you're like, oh, I can afford this car payment, make sure you can also afford the car insurance that goes along with it. Probably for your first vehicle when you first get there, especially if you're coming in as like a private E1, E2, maybe even E3, you may have to kind of try to settle for something kind of cheap. Especially if you don't really have a credit history, your interest rate is probably gonna be extremely high because you don't have very good credit, you don't have any credit developed yet, you don't have anybody to co-sign for you, so it's probably best just to kind of, you know, kind of build up some credits so that way maybe later on when you become an E4, you can afford a nicer vehicle type of thing and just kind of tough it out with some inexpensive vehicle if you even need one in the first place because sometimes you don't even need one in the first place because you can catch a ride with people, you can just ride a bike around post, depending on where you're stationed at, maybe that might be an option, but it really depends on you and what you wanna do on your free time as well. So you may not need a vehicle, maybe you do need a vehicle, maybe your motor pool is really far away, maybe there's other things you wanna do and you wanna have a vehicle, but don't go rushing into some expensive vehicle you can't afford, especially since they're probably gonna charge you a lot in interest because you don't have any credit history. Maybe if you have the option to get a co-signer, maybe you have the option you have some money saved up and you can put a large down payment down, and you get interest rate down. So maybe even talk with your leadership that has a little bit more experience with buying cars. Don't just rush into getting something right away. By the way, we got Valentine's Day right around the corner as of at least recording this video. And if you like this t-shirt I got, it's a very special grunt style Valentine's Day themed t-shirt. And they got a few other ones you can check out. Check out the link down in the description box down below. If you utilize my promo code Chaos Army on your very first purchase, you can save up to 25% off your first purchase. So make sure you're utilizing that link, make sure you're utilizing that promo code so you can save a little bit of money, get some cool Valentine's Day shirts, or even other shirts that are not even really military related or not even Valentine's Day related. They got a lot of cool stuff. Check them out down to the link in the description box down below. Now, maybe related to romance stuff, you gotta be careful uh, around some military installations. Sometimes the local soldiers don't have the best reputation with the local women or the local men or whatever the case is. You gotta be a little cautious. For example, I can give you a good example. When I was stationed at Fort Riley and even people I've talked to currently that have been stationed at Fort Riley, college women in that area do not particularly like a lot of the army guys because army guys have kind of bad reputation. So be cautious of where you're trying to find a, you know, soulmate or a, you know, partner of some sort or whatever the case is. One thing that you're going to probably find that's pretty common near uh, military installations or at least army bases, strip clubs. There's probably at least one, two, whatever amount of strip clubs that are probably pretty close to that installation. 
There's probably also pawn shops. Uh, it used to be a thing with ca check cashing places. That's not really a thing anymore, but that used to be a pretty big one. So usually there's strip clubs, usually there's um, pawn shops, usually there's tattoo shops that are pretty common in the areas. I'm not saying don't go to those places, just kind of be cautious. You know, sometimes they are kind of targeting soldiers for certain things, so be cautious of them. And I will give you a little bit of heads up for my male friends out there watching this. Do not go to a strip club and think that because a stripper shows you a bunch of attention that she's now your girlfriend. It's, it's not, it's not how it goes. So be cautious of things. You'll hear a lot of stories from other soldiers, but be cautious when you, where you're going at, you know, your first duty station or any duty station really. Now for my viewers out there that are already on their first duty station, second duty station, veterans, whatever, what tips do you have for individuals that are showing up to their very first duty station? Make sure to leave me some comments down below. But one last tip I wanna give you for your very first duty station. Don't base that duty station or any, really any other duty station on the leadership because leadership comes and goes, right? You're gonna have a platoon sergeant, maybe you'll have that platoon sergeant for a year, two years, whatever, and then that'll re replace with someone else. Commanders, first sergeants, all of them come and go. Sometimes you're gonna have great leadership, sometimes you're gonna have bad leadership, and sometimes you're gonna have, you know, a little bit of both, whatever the case might be, but don't base that duty station based on that leadership. Base it on what you can do there that maybe falls in line with your interests. Find out what there is you know, in that local area. Try to get out and try to go check stuff out, right? If you just stick to the barracks or stick to your little bubble type of thing, you're not getting a chance to really experience the area. And in some duty stations, there is some really cool stuff to go check out and a lot of fun things to do, depending on like what you're into. For example, one of my favorite duty stations, my top one of the places I was stationed at, Fort Carson, which I still live in the area, right? I still work on Fort Carson. There's a lot of great stuff for like going climbing. There's a lot of sporting events. There's a lot of things for, you know, doing outdoor activities, indoor activities, concerts, all sorts of stuff to really check out. That is one of the reasons why I like this duty station, why I thought it was a really great one. I had good leadership, I had bad leadership, and I didn't judge you know, my experience of being stationed there based on whether or not I had good leadership or bad leadership. I judged it on if I had something to do when I had that free time. When I was off duty, was there things for me to go do? And I think that's what makes it a good duty station is what you know, what is there to do in that area? You know, if you wanna, you know, be able to have a good time, is there something to go do? If I wanna go and do something indoors or outdoors, is there options for me based on my interests, right? Don't judge it based on, oh, I had a really crappy platoon sergeant, oh, I had a really cra crappy first sergeant, and you know, my unit sucked really bad. You know, that's gonna be anywhere. So you could be at the most perfect duty station and you have crappy leadership, and you can't really judge that duty station based on that leadership that was there temporarily, that stuff comes and goes. So make sure you get out and check out what there is available based on your interest for that area. Now, a while back, I actually did a video talking about, in my opinion, what are the top five duty stations to get assigned to in the United States Army. And if you like to check that video out, you can check that out right here. Now, make sure you're also subscribed so you can check out other videos and get alerts when new videos go live. Check out links down in the description box down below. Thanks for watching. I'm Christopher Chaos, and I'll see you next time. See ya.